Welcome into Quakes exclusive here at our PayPal Park Studios alongside the former Earthquakes midfielder Chris Dangerfield, World Cup reporter Carlos Justis, I'm Kylan Mills. The season opener is in the books, not the result the Earthquakes were looking for. Atlanta United took the 2-1 victory in front of 67,000 of their fans at home. However, a lot of strong play and positives for the Quakes to build on. Carlos, what were your thoughts on the match? Well, I feel like the, everybody at the club first is frustrated with a result that's obvious because of the way it happened. But when you really go in and analyze how it went, first of all, I think Lucci did a great job setting up this game. The front three had a fantastic game. The addition of the new pieces also had a big bang on, on, the, on the team. And that first half was fantastic. And when you think about it, it's always tough to play on the road for your first match, especially when it's in the East Coast. You're three hours ahead. There's 67,000 people at turf field that's always hard to play on. And now all of a sudden, you can bring that down. You limit it, and you d dominate for most of the game. And that's what makes it more frustrating, because it's just two mistakes in two dead ball situations that bring the result back. And obviously, that's not where you want to start, but I think there's a lot of positives when you really think how the Quakes set up this game and, and make it through. Yeah, I thought that uh, tactically, I thought Lucci really got the game plan right, him and his staff. He knew there was going to be a big crowd, a lot of energy. He played on the front foot. He came out with high energy, pressed their back four. He made it very difficult for them to play at the back. Uh, you know that Atlanta liked to use their fullbacks to get forward. He trapped them back there. The front three, very effective, especially I thought the player of Espinosa and also Jeremy Obobese. And it allowed the team also to press higher defensively from the back. You could see the experience of Carlos Coezo. You could see the experience of Jonathan Mensah. The way they organized things and won the ball back early for the earthquakes was very effective. One thing that stood out to me was the play of those front three. Cowell, Abobasi, Espinosa appeared to work so well together. They varied their runs. They were able to play interchangeably, fluidly, cutting back and forth, making it really difficult for defenders to follow them and to track them. And you have to constantly communicate. That first goal coming in the 13th minute was excellent to see Abobasi getting on the end of an Espinosa cross. Danger, what did you like about the buildup on that play? Well, first of all, we talked about the high press, but behind that, it was so well organized. The experience of Mensa was allowing Rodriguez to snap in there and just get in front of the, their offensive players. He wins the ball back on the halfway line. He does well to control the play. And immediately, he's looking for that space on the right-hand side. He knows that potentially Goodman on the left-hand side for Atlanta is trying to get forward as they try and play out the back. There's the space for Espinosa. He switches it out there quickly, one-on-one. -on -one. Most of the time, Christian Espinosa gets across it. And on the other end of that, you've got Jeremy Obobese. He's gambling. You can see these guys working on this in practice so many times. Obobese is gambling. He knows there's a very good chance that ball is going to get into that area one way or the other. Brooks Leonard, he's all over Obobese trying to stop that play. Very brave, very smart, very strong run by Obobese. He gets on the end and he gets re his rewards. Overall, an excellent goal by the Quakes. An excellent goal, and also I thought some strong play from the middle three in the midfield. We were, we were looking for Carlos Grueso to see how he would fit into that six role, how he would work with Jackson Ewell. What did you think about Jackson Ewell's performance playing in that eight spot? I think it's one of the best games I've seen from Jackson since he'd been drafted by the San Jose Earthquakes. And when you think about it, it also has to do with the fact that they bring Grueso in. Because before, Jackson was asked to do a lot of defensive tasks that I don't think is his strength. He's a player that can distribute the ball, has very good touch, he has a very good foot, and he has a fantastic shot from mid-range, and he also has good, very good technique. But when you constantly are asking him to drag back, he's not going to help you a lot. The fact that now he has Carlos Grueso there, allow him to play that A role, that 10 role, a little looser. He can switch sides, he can go. He had a fantastic play on the side where he takes on the guy and leaves him, and leaves him on the dust. So that's what you want from Jackson Jewel. That's what he can give you. And I think it comes from putting that piece of Carlos Grueso right behind him so he can be more determined. Well, it was unfortunate the result didn't come just because of those two late goals in extra time. Tiago Almada, just world-class strikes on both of those goals, I thought, both coming off set pieces as well in extra time. So at least he didn't have a goal in the run of play. But what were your initial thoughts on that danger? Well, when I first I was watching the game, obviously, live, and when I saw the goals go in, my initial thought was, could Daniel do any more on those goals? But after watching the goals again, I thought on the first one especially, the subs have just come in. Maybe there's a little bit of a miscommunication, but somebody needs to be out into the area where the best player on the field for Atlanta, Thiago Armada, is there and he's open. 
Grueso tries to close it down, but you can see that Daniel was trying to get that back four to press out. And anytime the ball goes backwards, defenders need to try and push out a little bit. A lot of bodies in there. I think he maybe got a little flick off of Mensah's head as well. Difficult one for Daniel to deal with. On the second goal, it's a free kick in a perfect position for a player like Almada. It's a good distance out. He can dip the ball over the wall. I think Daniel was maybe cheating a little bit to his right because he's hoping the wall was going to take care of it on that left-hand side. But it's a really good strike, you know, Carlos. It's, a, it's right in that top corner. Yes, Daniel gets a hand on it. If he'd have saved it, it would have been a world-class game. As an ex-player, after all the hard work that went on for that first 70, 80 minutes, the way the Quakes played, it would have been great if he'd have pulled out a world-class save and got a point because I think the Quakes definitely deserved to get a point in that game. And especially when you think about it, when, when the subs come in, um, I think there was a little bit of not having Judson, not having Nico Shakiris. The depth hurts a little bit, and, and, and that brings you to a point where the Quakes were defending more because they need to, more than they because they want to. And that's especially why I feel Luch is going to be really adamant about that specific play because ball's on the corner kick, and you have the best player on the team lose, and they don't crash into him. But, you know, those things happen, especially when you have the tired legs. That's how they bring the result back. And, but there's a lot to build on because I also that opens up an opportunity for those who come in into the game to be the next man up, to take that position and say, this is how we're going to close games. And that's something that you can also start working on when you have such a long season ahead of you. You mentioned the tired legs, and that's something that I don't think can be overlooked. It's such a tough situation to be in. You've traveled cross country. It's a season opener, a three-hour time difference. That's just a tough spot to try to close out a game. All right, well, we have a behind-the-scenes look at how the Quakes' first road trip of the season went. Let's take a look. Back, everyone, as we get ready for today's affair between your San Jose Earthquakes and Atlanta United. Attack brings it up into the Atlanta final third. Now on top of the 18, Espinosa brings it down. Marked by Goodman, driving to the byline, shot back by Gary Abomasi scores the first goal of the season, and San Jose takes a one nothing lead in the 12th minute. Espinosa and Jabo pick up right where they left off, and San Jose has the early lead in Atlanta. Top of the 18 and a shot. Oh, and a goal! 
All right, up next for the earthquakes, they take on the Vancouver Whitecaps coming here to our house, PayPal Park. The Whitecaps coming off a 2-1 to one loss to Real Salt Lake. What are your thoughts initially on this match? It's an interesting match. It was sort of like the earthquakes game in many respects because Vancouver came out strong. They got the early goal. They got the first goal. They had many chances to make it two, but didn't get that second goal, which obviously would have helped the Quakes against Atlanta as well. And then all of a sudden, RSL gets two goals in two minutes. It's a Vancouver team, I think, that's got some special pieces, and we'll talk about those guys in a second. But I do think that if Lucha Gonzalez gets the team prepared and come out with the same attitude as they did in Atlanta, it's the team they can beat here at PayPal Park. Yeah, absolutely. And they also have very interesting pieces that they could hurt you if you don't take advantage of it. Um, especially Julian, uh, Julian Dressel, he's been in, with the league since 2017. He racks up 61 assists. So he's the main guy that you need to be able to close down. Luckily for the Earthquakes, he plays in an area that it's what looks strongest for the team in this game with Carlos Gresso playing on that sixth role, kind of not making him have those runs. So we'll see how, how they can manage that. And also they have other players like Ryan Gold, who's, who's also very important. They brought uh, other players come in for, for this season. But it, it's hard to tell because it's the first game of the season. There's also moving pieces. The team is going to look different. They did play with these 4 2 one, three. It's more like a, I, call it the, <laughs> I call it the Christmas tree formation. So it was a little bit defensive. And when you think that they're going to come home, and the earthquakes are going to have to put the, for, the foot forward and they're going to have to take the initiative to go and attack. That's where you have to be careful with that counterattack because I feel that's what the quality caps are going to try to do. Also at the season opener is going to be some celebrations of the Earthquakes 2003 MLS Cup Championship team. I can't believe it's been 20 years. If you guys want to feel old, Cade Cowell was just one month old when the Earthquakes took down the Chicago Fire 4-2 in that final game. Is there anything that stands out to you about that match? Yeah, a great group of guys. I mean, they're just uh, legends within the Earthquakes family. The captain, Jeff Agus, Ronnie Eklund in the midfield, you know, D. Rowe, what a fantastic player he is as well. And, you know, any time I look at the new active full kit that we have in front of us, and every time I look at a new shirt, the first thing I look at is those two stars that are above the crest. 2003 was one of those stars, and that was the MLS Cup they bought here under the guidance of Frank Yallop. And we, we hope this is a big celebration because they deserve it. And you got to come out here to PayPal Park. The San Jose Earthquakes in Vancouver kicking off at 7.30 local time. If you can't come in person, be sure to watch that game. It will be available right here on Apple TV. Thanks so much for hanging out with us, everybody. We'll see you next time.